today, Blue and I are in downtown Marshall, and we're going to explore some history. We're going to look at some historical markers and monuments, so come along and join us. Marshall is a community rich in history, and there are many historic markers throughout the community. Today, in this video, we're going to concentrate on just the ones that are within walking distance of downtown on Michigan Avenue. We'll begin by looking at the historic marker for the town of Marshall as a whole. Founded in 1831 by Sidney Ketchum and settlers from New York and New England, the town was named in honor of Chief Justice John Marshall. Sidney Ketchum was a land surveyor who was born in Clinton County, New York, and seeking a new home and hoping to found a town Ketchum explored central lower Michigan in 1830. Later that year, he obtained government grants for the land on which most of Marshall now stands, and he named the town in honor of the Chief Justice. Also noted on the plaque is the townsman Isaac Crary and the Reverend John Pierce planned in 1834 the innovative Michigan public school system. Marshall's early hopes of becoming the state capital were not rewarded, but the coming of the Michigan Central Railroad in 1844 increased prosperity and the town remained a rail center until the 1870s. And this marker can be found right across from the fountain in the center of Marshall. The next marker is in front of the National House. The National House was erected by Andrew Mann in 1835 and this structure is reported to be the first brick building in Calhoun County. Located right across the street from the fountain in downtown Marshall. National House was also known as Man's Hotel. It served travelers passing through Marshall and hosted political and community gatherings. Over the years, it's also been known as the Acre House and Facey House. Its varied history includes use as a wagon and windmill factory. The two-story low gabled building now has been restored to its original appearance and is used as an inn. The next most memorable landmark when you're in downtown Marshall is the Brooks Memorial Fountain. In October 1929, Marshall's mayor, Harold C. Brooks, announced his gift to the city of an electric fountain in memory of his late father, Charles E. Brooks. The fountain was designed by architect Howard F. Young and landscape engineer Herman Swanson and with collaboration from engineers from General Electric. It was dedicated on April 26, 1930. Some 7,000 people cheered and were in awe with absolute wonderment when the mayor's son, Craig, turned on the fountain and its multicolored lights. There's a historic marker that was placed opposite the fountain in, in 2017 and on the back side of that marker is also a commemoration to the first courthouse which was established in 1829 in Calhoun County, making Marshall its county seat in 1831. The county built its first courthouse on this site between 1837 and 1840. It was designed in the Greek Revival style. The building had a rectangular footprint with four columns on each side. The Brooks Memorial Fountain and this historic marker are right in the center of town in a circular park in the middle of a roundabout. Just across the street from the fountain in Marshall stands the Honolulu House. This house was built by Abner Pratt, who settled in Marshall in 1839 and in the 1850s became Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court. In 1857 to 1859, he was United States Consul to the Sandwich Islands, what we now know today as the Hawaiian Islands. Returning home, he built this house which has become known as the Honolulu House in 1860 to recreate the island atmosphere that he enjoyed while he was in Hawaii. Teak and ebony were used to build the house and the murals on the wall depicted tropical plants and animals. In 1887, the interior was changed, but the opulent style of the exterior, unique in the Midwest, has survived. There's a historic marker now in front of the house, and it is pretty much considered one of the most well-known landmarks in the city of Marshall. Abner Pratt also served as a state legislator and was the mayor of Marshall at the time of his death 
in 1863. Across from the fountain and the Honolulu House is a Veterans Memorial Park. There are several monuments in this little park. There is a memorial plaque on one of the monuments that reads, this memorial is dedicated to honor those of this community who served in time of war and to perpetuate the memory of those who made the supreme sacrifice for God and country. This plaque and this monument was erected in 1943 by the Exchange Club. There is also a second wall that has individual bricks for different veterans in the community, what branch of the service they served in, and whether or not they served in a war or just the time period they served the nation. Between the Veterans Memorial and the Honolulu House, there is a historic marker commemorating the location of the Isaac Crary House, who was one of the original founders of the city of Marshall, as mentioned earlier in this video. Heading east down Michigan Avenue, just past Bud's Automotive Repair, we come across a few other historic markers. The first is to the Wolverine Rangers, which commemorates James Pratt, editor of the Marshall Statesman, who in 1848 invited readers to join him on a, on a gold-seeking expedition. More than 50 Michigan men pooled their resources and formed the Wolverine Rangers. This essentially was a in response to the California Gold Rush. They headed west. They were all enthusiastic and having fun. They came back destitute. The whole story is on this plaque. Just past this marker is a small Grand Street Park, which features the mural of the city of Marshall. There's also a plaque right next to the mural showing the date that it was established and all the people that contributed to make it possible. Continuing east on Michigan Avenue is a historic marker for the Interurban Depot. This was the Marshall Interurban Depot, which was located at 220 West Michigan Avenue it was built in 1903. The depot had a waiting room, a freight house, and an electrical transformer. Interurbans were electric light railroads which connected all of the major cities in Michigan from the 1890s into the 1930s. This route was between Jackson and Battle Creek with regular stops in Albion, Marshall, and Parma. There is also another historical marker on the building right next to a mural. The historic marker on the building explains the Interurban Depot and also the Gasoline Museum, which was a collection of gasoline, oil, and Marshall memorabilia by the original owner of the business on this site. It explains the mural to the right, which depicts the history of the Michigan Avenue business site and the Interurban Depot was located there from 1903 until 1929, at which time the electric rail railway went out of business. And then it goes into further detail about the waiting room having been torn down, but the storage room remaining intact, and it was turned into the gasoline museum. The historical mural was painted in 2011 by artist David McKee. Continuing down Michigan Avenue, we find the historical marker for James A. Minor. He was born in Marshall in 1842, began studying law in Clinton, Iowa, completed his studies in Marshall, and was admitted to Calhoun County Bar in 1863. He served as a prosecuting attorney. His office was located right there on Michigan Avenue, and President Benjamin Harrison appointed him a Utah Territorial Justice in 1890, and later he was elected to the state's first Chief Justice, 1896 to 1903. He died in 1907. When you walk down Michigan Avenue, you're going to see several businesses that have a Michigan Centennial business plaque in front of them. Here are two examples. The first is the Hemmingson Rexel Drugstore, which was founded in 1855. The other is for the Sullivan Insurance Agency, which was founded in 1853. So these businesses that have these plaques are ones that existed or still exist that served over a hundred years in the community. This marker commemorates 
Charles T. Gorham. Gorham came to Marshall in 1836 from New York State. He was first a merchant, then he became a banker in 1865 and organized the first National Bank of Marshall, which is now the Michigan National Bank. Many of the citizens of Marshall held strong abolitionist views, and in 1847, they banded together to prevent the return of a fugitive slave by the name of Adam Crosswhite to Kentucky. Charles Gorham was a defendant in that famous fugitive case. He was also later vice president of the first Republican convention at Jackson in 1854. Later in his life in the 1870s, he served the United States as the minister to the Netherlands and then as an assistant secretary of the interior. Harry Potter and Houdini fans get ready to say abracadabra. A little bit farther down Michigan Avenue, you find the historic plaque for the Museum of Magic. From saloon to billiard parlor to clothing store to bakery to museum, this building, built in 1868, has known many transformations. Since April Fool's Day, 1978, it has housed a unique collection that celebrates the magician's arts of wonder and delight. Michigan's link to magic is no illusion, for nearby Colon, a center of magic manufacturing, was once home to famed magician Harry Blackstone Sr whose memorabilia is displayed in the Museum of Magic here. Crossing Michigan Avenue and heading down Exchange Street, you come to the home of Sidney Ketchum, also known as the Marshall House. This handsome structure was built in 1838 by Sidney Ketchum, the founder of Marshall, as mentioned in earlier in the video. For many years, it was one of the largest and most elaborate hotels outside of Detroit. Then the three-story structure known as the Marshall House had 40 bedrooms and a seating capacity of 150. The hotel closed in 1859. It reopened in 1864 as the Perrin Collegiate Institute, which was a boarding and day school for girls. It later became a mortuary, and today it stands as a retail collection of shops. There's a plaque out front honoring Sidney Ketchum and also the Marshall House. Heading back in the direction of Michigan Avenue, just near the Marshall House, is a small park with a fountain. And in this park, you'll find a historic marker telling you the history of Michigan Avenue, as well as a stone monument going into detail of the history of Territorial Road. The main road in Marshall was once a Native American Indian Trail, which eventually became Territorial Road and then later called State Street, before it eventually became known as Michigan Avenue. And the entire history is explained between these two historic markers. Heading east again on Michigan Avenue, we come to a historical museum, the Grand Army of the Republic. In 1866, Northern Civil War veterans organized the Grand Army of the Republic to fight for veterans' pensions and other benefits. Marshall's Civil War veterans organized a Grand Army of the Republic chapter in 1883. They built this handsome red brick structure as their headquarters in 1902, and it was named for Marshall's Corporal Calvin Colgrove, color bearer for the Michigan 1st Infantry, who was killed in the First Battle of Bull Run on July 21st, 1861. In 1977, the Marshall Historical Society purchased the building to house its archives. There's a historic marker to the Grand Army of the Republic in front of the museum, as well as a stone marker telling more details of the fascinating history and what I like most adding to the great history of the building and the men who helped build it is this historic cannon that sits on the grass in front of the museum. As we head west again on Michigan Avenue back in the direction where we started we come to the Marshall Post Office, which has a historic marker in front of it. On one side, it speaks about Howard F. Young, who designed the Marshall Post Office building in 1932. He also designed the Brooks Memorial Fountain, as mentioned earlier in this video. And on the other side of the marker, you'll find reference to the history of postmasters in general, which is a very fascinating history. In 1831, George Ketchum, co-founder of the city of Marshall, became this area's first postmaster. 
A little bit farther down Michigan Avenue, we find a historic marker on a building for Thomas J. O'Brien. He was a graduate of Marshall High School and the University of Michigan Law School. He practiced law here in Marshall at the First National Bank building from 1865 to 1876. He was appointed as minister to Denmark in 1905 by President Theodore Roosevelt. During his tenure in that position, he began negotiations for the U.S. purchase of the Danish West Indies, now the U.S. Virgin Islands. In 1908, he served as the U.S. ambassador to Japan, and in 1911, the ambassador to Italy. He resigned from diplomatic service in 1913 and resumed his law practice here in Marshall. If you ever take time to look through some very early newspapers prior to 1906, you'll find that there are a lot of ads for patent medicines. Continuing down Michigan Avenue, there are two historic markers, one for the patent medical town and the other for two medical business leaders during this same time period. More than 50 medicine companies have operated out of Marshall, Michigan. 37 of these emerged between 1895 to 1905, the heyday of the over-the-counter remedies known as patent medicines. This was all before the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. Some unregulated companies made exaggerated claims for products such as electric belts and pills to restore lost manhood. Many companies were short-lived, but two in Marshall continued for decades. The F.A. Stewart Company, which operated from 1892 to 1956, and the Brooks Rupture Appliance Company, which operated from 1880 to 2003. In 1867, the Eagle Block housed five storefronts and a millinery in Marshall. In April 1870, the Eagle Opera House opened on its third floor, debuting the Nyad Queen Operetta. The theater hosted a variety of live shows through 1903. Unfortunately, that year in 1903, on December 30th, a fire at the Iroquois Theater in Chicago took more than 600 lives. The shock was so felt through the communities in the Midwest that the local inspectors in Marshall decided to evaluate Marshall's public buildings for health and safety. The Common Council voted to close the Eagle Opera House in January 1904, citing its third floor location and the lack of fire escapes. There's a historic marker on the side of the building where the Eagle Opera House once operated from. The historic Stagecoach Inn has a sign on the side of the building telling some of its history. The Stagecoach Inn is recognized as one of the outstanding examples in Michigan of the Greek Revival architecture in America. Built in 1838, it stands directly on the famous Territorial Road following Indian trails from Detroit to Chicago. The Stagecoach Inn is recognized as a Michigan Centennial business as it was founded in 1845. On our walk back to the fountain in Marshall, we pass by the First Baptist Church, which was built in 1850 to 1851. It was remodeled in 1876. The handsome Romanesque church now is the oldest church edifice in the city. It features rounded arch stained glass windows, and is an early example of a modified Akron semicircular seating plan. Not far from the last stop, you'll find the Marshall, Michigan Fire Department historic bell in front of the City Hall in honor of Harold Craig Brooks, Marshall Mayor from 1925 to 1931. He was regarded as the huge patron of Marshall and a lover of trees and a pioneer preservationist. Our final stop in Marshall in our search for historic markers and monuments is back near the fountain across the street at City Hall. There is a historic marker for the old stone barn. It was built by William Prindle in 1857. This landmark served as a livery stable for over 60 years. 
It also saw a brief use as a stagecoach stop for the lines connecting Coldwater and Lansing. By 1928, it had become an unsightly gas station. Purchased through the efforts of Mayor Harold C. Brooks, its conversion into a city hall by architect Howard Young was completed in time for the Marshall Centennial Celebration of 1930. So that's going to do it for today's tour of downtown historic Marshall, looking at historic markers. I hope you enjoyed this little walk. Certainly, I did not hit all the historic markers there are in Marshall. There's many more to discover, but I hope you enjoyed today's little tour. If you like today's video, please give me a like, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.